Alright folks, stove the hobo with the first episode of 2016. Hopefully about to get underway. What we're going to be trying to do here is head east out of Denver to Chicago with some possible stops on the way. As maybe you can imagine, this city is being choked out by millennial hipster 420 friendly dreck which means it's definitely time to get out of here. We've got this apparent Denver-Chicago double stack train. And uh, I don't see a crew on there. Obviously, I'm not excited about the fact that it's day out here. I thought maybe the train might pull out before dawn's really light here on this Memorial Day weekend. But, uh, basically what we're looking at, we're going to have to wait until it starts moving and then go through this hole. Very convenient hole. And look what we have here. Peering safely from my safe vantage point. Got a crew pulling in. The crew is here. It's going to be time to rock very soon. Hop on pop. If you notice, you've also got this cop shop through here. Those are all Denver police. All those cars in there. I don't, I'm not worried at all about that, but obviously if they call, it's not gonna take very long for the cops to get here. That's the main point of that. So I'd like to point out the bull. This is the train. If there's any train they're gonna watch, it's gonna be this one. This is the hottest train out of Denver. But the fortunate thing is that on this side of the track here, there's no place where the bull can drive his car. right there. Ocean Stacks accompanied by a ton of F and JB Hunt 53 containers. So it's Memorial Day weekend. I'd just like to pay my respects to all our fallen soldiers. And I think a good way to do that is to remain free. Denver National Western Complex. All the pens are empty. These are only full of animals in January, I'm pretty sure. Things are looking up. I don't see any other obstacles to being out of Denver very soon. Once again, this is a convenient place if you're gonna get run over. They just pull you off the tracks and put you right into the grave. Real day weekend. That's them. Those are the guys. Say thank you to.
quickly passing through Bay, Colorado. Yeah, so being in eastern Colorado, we still got just mostly grasslands. Once we hit Nebraska and get a little deep into Nebraska, we'll give way to the corn. There you go, the train and myself along with it are pulling into McCook, Nebraska, which is the first crew change east of Denver. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to get off, just uh, walk around, see what's going on in town. I've got enough time, I don't need to just go direct to Chicago. It looks pretty pleasant. A lot of horses and cattle and farm animals hanging out. And here we've got the, the westbound. It's about 1.30 and you've got the westbound uh, Chicago and Denver pulled in here ready to rock. So if you're in McCook, mid-afternoon is when these trains show up. Pretty decent spot here next to the tracks. You could definitely camp without any kind of issue, it looks like. So there are some guys who ride trains who basically, they don't mind and maybe they're even glad if you can see them and smell them from half a mile away. That's fine, whatever, but I mean, I recommend bringing an extra set of clothes so that you can go hang out in the town and not draw any attention to yourself. So this is McCook, Nebraska, and as I imagine, there's not a lot going on here right now, but honestly, not a lot going on is just what I was interested in after being in Denver, where basically every millennial pothead has descended on the state for the weed thing. So it's a nice break out here to just be out in these plains. You got a train yard, you got a couple businesses, you got a lot of ag stuff going on. And that's really nice. Obviously this would become suicidally boring if you were to stay here more than probably two days, but I've just been here about an hour. going on? Stove the Hobo is still here in McCook, Nebraska. <clears throat> and uh, I will say it's definitely starting to lose its luster. Definitely starting to get boring. And I could definitely see that this could be one of those places where you really regret getting off the train. So the situation is that tomorrow is Sunday and this is Memorial Day weekend. So those are two factors that can make uh, getting another train east or west for that matter extremely difficult out of here. This could be a view that I'm going to be looking at for days and it's starting to sink in here. But another issue that has to be pointed out is there's only one train on this line that's going to get you to Chicago. You could ride the Junk or the General Manifest train. Uh, but I'm not sure about that past Lincoln. And at, at Lincoln, there's junctions. So, I mean, you could get on something out of Lincoln going east, but you're not sure that the train is going to go to Chicago or it may make a north fork. There's a fork there. You know, and I mean, just to add a little bit more about this, I mean, there may be a lot of folks who think this is some glorious lifestyle. I mean, I just gotta tell you, it isn't. You got tick infested woods here where you can camp out. So, okay, you save money on a hotel room, but you get Lyme's disease. You've got the possibility of being marooned in this town for a seriously long time. You've got the fact that nobody in this town ever walks anywhere which means that you walking around town, no matter how clean cut you try to look, you're gonna stand out immediately. Cause this is one of those places where everybody's got a Dodge Ram and nobody walks anywhere. So guaranteed, I'm already like in the register 
of the cops and like half the residents here. So our culinary choices for McCook is going to be Casey's Pizza and I just got a Coors Light because I already drank a, a heavier style beer earlier. I like to say that Casey's Pizza is really solid quality for pretty much any pizza and I don't I mean it's Casey's stores they're just in the Midwest I mean this is if you taste this pizza you're gonna know what I'm talking about it's better than Papa John's Pizza Hut Domino's One definite positive attribute is you've got the beer store that also sells pretty good pizza just right here. That's the tracks. It's on the other side of those trees. Well, not surprisingly, there's absolutely zero going on here for nightlife, even though it's Saturday. Well, it appears this is going to do it for McCook. We've got this eastbound General Manifest train has just rolled in. It's sometime in the very darkest hours of the night. Overall, this is definitely a worthwhile stop to get off the train. You've got reliable uh, one-a-day double stacks that come pretty much you know, in the same time window, mid-afternoon, going each direction. In addition to other trains, you've got pretty close proximity to beer. You know, this is a very, very laid back setting here. I mean go into the Lincoln Yard now. Uh, I was hoping this was going to bypass the yard and go to Galesburg so I could just stay on. But basically what that means is uh, shortly I'm going to need to bail off. Even though we're way out here, it doesn't look like there's anything. Lincoln is just around a couple more corners. It's been a nice ride across southern Nebraska for the last six hours. Sign that you're almost in the Lincoln Yard. You see I-80 up here. And I think you can see a train leaving the yard on another spur. The track up to Alliance, Nebraska over there. It's a very reasonable area. This, this is what it looks like just right before the yard. Time to bail. It's the camera case. This is my pack. Safely off the train here in Lincoln. <laughs> Definitely a very quiet day here at the west end of the Lincoln Yard. So I'd like to point out a few things here. Uh, first of all, you got this split right here. Anything pulling out and going up that one over there, that's going to Alliance, Nebraska. And you know, if it's a coal empty, it's going to the mines. There's one freight a day that runs up there at least, which is a Kansas City to Pasco train. Basically here, I don't know how to ID any of the trains in the yard as far as the, the freights. You've gotta just wait out here somewhere at this junction and it looks like they're going slow enough. This coal empty is taking the split to the north heading up to the mine through Alliance Nebraska and Chilton Whale. Just gonna walk in. I've never been hassled before walking through here. There's a little road next to the yard that may or may not be private property. We'll find out. 
still under here after three years on that trip. Some other decent tags in here. It's nice to see that people are respectful. I mean, this looks like you could wipe it off with a washcloth, but people have been nice here. Here's the train I came in on right here, this one with the tankers. So just to explain the situation, this is the east edge of the yard. Here, you got this split. So anything going to the left is going either Chicago or Sioux Falls, or sorry, Sioux City. That split is a ways out of town, so you can't really be sure which way you're gonna go at that split. Now here, any of these are going to KC. So if you're trying to get a KC and you see a slow moving train pulling through here, Pretty much guaranteed KC. I don't think there's any splits down that direction. So this is Lincoln. And uh, upon arriving here, I mean, maybe there was this day and age where you can show up on a train with your pack and find some kind of scene. There's something interesting going on in towns like this, like back in the 50s and 60s with all those hitchhiker beatnik guys. But whatever the case is, that's definitely not going on here. There's, there's nothing going on here at all. Maybe it's just because it's the weekend, the Memorial Day weekend, that's possible. But I'm just, I'm getting fatigued carrying around this pack. It's hot. This place just seems basically deserted and miserable. So I'd say if you don't have to get off in Lincoln, I'd, I'd just recommend riding through. <laughs> So lots happened since uh, last night. Basically, I got on that train in Lincoln, kind of gambling. I knew there's a fork up ahead where the thing might go to Sioux City, but it was like, there's no way to know. And I think the, the train I want doesn't run on Sunday. So the train did go north and now we're up here. And the train is stopped in Fremont, Nebraska. Not much going on here. and. I've happened to know that in Fremont, uh, a different main line runs through Union Pacific. I'm gonna switch trains, because this is going to Sioux City. Things looking sprightly here. In the Fremont graveyard. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know if I'm just getting old or just getting tired of doing this. I mean, first I got the wrong train in Lincoln, which is frustrating. And now I've just been walking. I mean, I've wa had to walk about two miles back from where that other train stopped to here, hoping to find where the Union Pacific is gonna stop. And uh, I mean, this pack is heavy. There's mosquitoes, you know, I'm just getting fried out here. And I'm hoping for some luck. I need a t one train from here to Chicago. I'm supposed to be there tomorrow. 
and this is at least 500 miles away still. We got this coal load going through here. Supposedly the trains stop here. I don't know what's going on at all. So this is Fremont, Nebraska, which uh, like much of the rest of Nebraska is pretty much deserted and free of anything interesting and new. I mean, you can just see here, this is Memorial Day. There's absolutely nothing going on in this town at all. I don't know how stranded I am right now. I know there's train tracks and I've been hanging out over there. None of the trains are stopping. And it's basically probably impossible to hitchhike out of here right now. Just completely deserted, this town. Although it's nice that they put these flags up. Well, some people, 9 a.m. might seem a little early to get started. I just, I don't know what else to do here. This is becoming grim here in Fremont, Nebraska. Good news, I gotta say for Nebraska, the beer store is usually pretty close to the train tracks. You got this green, actually it's a soybean processing facility here. Filling this car up with some kind of, I don't know, processed soy. Here at the ADM Fremont soy processing plant. Currently moving position here. It's a nice route to this leafy neighborhood. What I saw was all the trains, none of them are stopping at that crew office. They're all blitzing through. So what I think is going on is that well east, which is this direction, they're stopping down here. And that's, I saw crew vans going in that direction. So I'm walking down there right now in hopes to board a train going further east. The sun is about to set over the land of the Fremont, Nebraska here on Memorial Day, 1916. And it's looking like there's just nothing, I don't know, nothing doing. I think I'm in the right place. There's been some trains that have stopped, like this one, they're going west. Uh, and there's nothing else to do than just wait. There's no way to hitchhike out of here. There's not a bus. There's not an Amtrak. There's nothing. Interestingly enough, there's a lot of trains coming from the west that are branching off a ways down there. And there's a line in Council Bluffs, Iowa, Omaha Council Bluffs. And there's a lot of trains they're going that way you, you just see them zooming past over there it's there actually seems to be more going that way which i'm kind of surprised by because it's like that's not the main track that's kind of like a, a branch a branch off i mean the main line to chicago is right here so what's going on it's the darkest hours of the night stove the hobo here in a DPU on a coal train, finally getting out of Fremont. I've been here way longer than I wanted to. I got my smartphone. The cars are marked N-O-R-X. The coal cars, so I used Google, and it says those are Northern Indiana Power Authority, which means this train's going to Chicago, because there's a big junction ahead, and this train should go the right direction. situation where you don't want to get too comfortable. I'm super fatigued. I've been on like a, you know, extremely grueling schedule without any real long periods of sleep. But the problem is that in these engines there's a good chance, well as a fact, that every day somebody comes in here and checks. 
And the card, there's an inspection card. Inspection card here, 30th, today's the 31st. So I mean, if they're gonna come in here probably before Chicago. You know, don't get too comfy here. Regardless, I think I'm gonna have to get some sleep here. I have, the last, since leaving, I have not slept good at all because of this middle of the night schedule I've been following. If somebody walks in, we're just gonna have to, may have to deal with it. I'm not, probably not gonna be able to get it on camera as well if somebody walks in to inspect the locomotive. So, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a risk. I've gotta sleep though, I cannot stay awake right now. Still the hobo out here in the cornfields. Just popping up little shoots. That's all we have here, but in a couple months, that's gonna be big tall stocks. So somewhere in Iowa, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this could be Iowa or Nebraska. This train is super slow. Coal is the lowest priority to get on. I think I've only gone about 100 miles on this train five hours ago. like a place to hide outside the train because sometimes they check the bathroom but I'm looking up here this is this is not looking like there's any cover there's the crew office right there there's a little suspense here I mean if they come in they find me in the bathroom and they call the cops I don't see how you're gonna hide in this town I just don't see it Fortunately, the train is past the downtown. If it stopped there, I mean, there'd be no escape. That's guys coming for the inspection. There's no way to even remotely not be do, to do anything but get in the, in the restroom, okay. They're gone. Yes. Yes. Just checked off. 31st. sunset out here. You know, the Midwest, it doesn't get as much credit as it could for scenery. I mean, you got marshes, that's nice. You got woods, there's a lot of woods. It's not just cornfields. All kinds of beautiful trees, wildlife, birds, everything out here. Passing through Clinton, this is some kind of monster processing plant for something. You know, those standard huge, plants you see out in the Midwest. You got the little pleasant town of Clinton here. I mean, whenever I think of Clinton, I don't, the name has kind of been besmirched for obvious reasons, but 
The town's, it's not too bad. I stopped here before. It's pleasant. It's good for one day. There's this smell coming out of this plant. It smells like barley. And it smells like a brewery, and it's really making me want a beer. The beer store and all that stuff right over there. The old depot. Beer's clicking. Board it up. As always. This is it, folks. This is the big one. It's the mighty Mississippi. Come on, come on. folks stove the hobo here in Chicago on June 1st along with the other favorite member of the show wingman and recently for the last day or two we've just been hanging out in town checking things out but according to the volunteer security patrol I guess we've been 86 from this campsite here in this park which is kind of a shame it's right by the lake and stuff but pack up this campsite and uh, move down to the train yard and we've got a Interesting voyage planned for this episode. Stop the hobo. So you got this nice fountain. You got this lake. You got this, you know, cityscape going on here. But what you definitely got is time to get out of town right now. We're going to the subway. Catching a ride to the train yard, and we're out of here. Alright, we're done with downtown. We're taking the CTA train to a CSX yard. We're headed out of here. Bar yard, CSX, for southbound. So we're hoping to catch something on the main that's just going to be going slow or stopped here. Yeah, so all the CSX traffic leaving for the northeast, as well as just east towards Maryland and Ohio, comes through this spot, I'm pretty sure. Very south side Chicago. And we're hoping we'll stop on these mains here. These are the two main lines. These tracks here lead to uh, multiple possible destinations. We're not really committed to an exact destination, although Cumberland, Maryland would probably be the best. Uh, going this way, you could end up in uh, New Jersey via Buffalo. You could end up in Cleveland, possibly in Detroit, possibly Columbus, possibly Cincinnati. There's a lot of options, but the majority of these are going to the East Coast. Local Polish sausages here. I'm not gonna find these out west anywhere. Nice, the hot variety. Let's see here. Good. No. 
Up here you got this monster steel plant making these coils here. Let's see behind that fence. That's what they're making, those coils. We are out of Chicago on this 48. We are out of here. We're going through some kind of huge junction. There's a lot of these in Chicago. Look at all these different tracks. Look at all this. We got this white vehicle here. You never know who that guy is when you're just coming up. Who the hell is that guy? Not sure if that that could be the bull. Homeland <laughs> security right there. I don't know what he's doing. Gary's over there. The Lake Michigan is over there as well. Going to Gary, Indiana. another town we haven't even passed into a town in Ohio yet this is a major danger riding into this if you end on one of these intermodal trains if you end up in here I don't even know what you do and coming to a stop next to this intermodal yard I am hoping to God we're not gonna get involved with this thing we're outside the fence so we can bail right here. but if we back in there this is going to be Game over. Game over, man. Game over. Ever get in this yard is so Security enormous. Right there too. It's absolutely enormous. We're wondering if they're gonna add these cars on here. This guy's pulling these out. Hard to figure out. This is something to remember if you're a rider. This is a monster in our moto park. Between Garrett and Willard, I'm telling you, if you end up in that thing, you're not able to get out, and it's about four miles long. 
So this is Fostoria. We're about to arrive at the junction and we're slowing down, which is what a train that is turning right would do. Neither of us want to go right. We're going to be prepared to get off. What do you, you agree, John, right? Oh yeah, we're jumping. Right here, you've got a grade crossing coming in from Norfolk Southern. There's just tons of these throughout Ohio. This rail fan on here, Fomer, photographing the train. It's probably calling us in. Oh, here we go. This train is pulling off the mains. We're gonna bail. We don't wanna go south. You ready to go? I'm ready, man. All right. We've got everything tied up. We just gotta get off the Just do it, we'll do it right up here. All right, you first, go. I'll get you on tape. Ready? Hit it, just go. No. That's gonna show us the right way to do this. All right, here, John. Action shot in flip flops for the dismount. One flip flop, one barefoot. Jim Stobie. What's going on? We're here at Fostoria, Ohio, and uh, I didn't know this actually until I got here. But this is obviously a major rail fan, Fomerville. Massive diamond here. So you got. I think CSX going that way to Columbus, CSX going that way to Willard. North, I'm not sure where it goes. It could be Toledo. It doesn't matter. You don't want to go to Toledo, so we're not going north. And then we've got towards the west and the sunset. That is uh, back to Chicago. And another good thing about here, different than Southside Chicago, is these gas stations do sell beer. So for the foamers, if any of the foamers watch this show, look at the, you got two trains going parallel, the same direction right here. And for some reason this coal is actually going faster, which is weird. Here's John Kasich's, you know, economic miracle here in Fostoria. It's the darkest hours of the night in Fostoria and this grim, Gothic church is here. But the only real life going on is at the train tracks. The rest of this place is boarded up. It appears moribund. And I just want to find a place to get some chicken and some beer. I mean, you got this place, the rail, but it's shut down. There is nothing open at all. It's 10 p.m. Fostoria, Ohio. I'm throwing the flag on John Kasich. <laughs> Rail fan park here, which is probably the nicest part of the entire city. Big triangle. We got Norfolk Southern track here, CSX going past there, and over here. There's been a lot of rail fans hanging out here, foamers, in the last couple hours. So, if you come to Fostoria, this is probably, you know, as a rail fan, obviously you're gonna have to come here because it's a very nicely put together situation. Oh, yeah, I mean, so you got, you know, three different tracks in close proximity. You've got this nice restrooms. I don't know why they bothered putting a woman's restroom. You've got this nice radio. You can hear the radio. They've got the, the scanner of all the channels up here playing. We're definitely discreet about what we're doing here around foamers. Definitely want to keep it DL what you're doing around here with these foamers. I mean, you start talking about riding on a train, anything like that, guaranteed you're gonna get ratted out. And they've also got this nice map, which is actually very helpful. You can see the directions of all the lines going through here. Time to test the insulating qualities of this sleeping bag. Get this travel thing. Nice. Out of Fostoria. Peace. Gravel cars. I'm not sure where this gravel is going. Maybe just to Home Depot. This gravel train is 
en route to Willard, Ohio at least, where we can get another one to Cumberland. Willard, Ohio, and we gotta get off this train, it's not going yeah. through. What's going on at darkest hours of the night? Leaving Willard, I'm hoping this is gonna go to Cumberland. We're not totally positive. We're gonna go through the night, wake up somewhere in far east of here, and everything should be fine. Build the hobo east out. Oh my god, dude. I don't know if you can see him. I gotta run. They're coming. Oh, shit. Dude, there's cops. I gotta turn this off and just run, man. They're gonna think this is a gun and shoot me. Well, there may be a small problem. Uh, getting off that train, the cops arrived. And it was the kind of situation where if I would pulled my camera out, I could have been shot. That's how it works with live action. Um, I'm cool, I think. I think I'm cool. I've been down here. I ran well off the tracks. I'm a solid half mile, at least, in other words. It's been an hour. Stay put here for a while. 
Hardly, hardly a lamentable situation. Look at this river. This is the Appalachians. It was two CSX police, I believe. I didn't see much. And if I pulled for the camera, I mean, you never know what's gonna happen. You know, so that's life. John here, enjoying this Pleasant Creek, Cumberland. How's the temperature in there? Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect, man. It couldn't be better. What's going on? We're here in Cumberland. Finally reached the town. We had to hike in a little bit of a ways. Kind of sketch. Trying to watch where you step. So this is Cumberland, which uh, I'd say among the big dogs of the freight train crowd is among one of the top stops for getting off here in the Appalachian region. You got this red brick architecture. There's tons of different churches, like old church buildings going on. I mean, any direction you turn the camera at all. You've got an interesting looking building. I mean, for example, I haven't been to every county in the entire United States, but if you're going to get pulled off the train, I'd say this is probably the most picturesque courthouse you're going to see. So, I mean, while you're arrested or in trouble, you also have the privilege of getting to go inside this building on official business. You got this old passenger train depot here. Naturally, Amtrak pulls in on a different track and just this little, you know, prefab building in a different part of the town. So if you're not into modern, boring architecture, this is definitely a good city to come to. You got red brick everywhere, pretty much the whole town. And you've just got unique buildings and old churches and all that stuff all over the place here. So one of the more interesting features of this Cumberland town is that you've got the Great Allegheny Trail, which runs from Pittsburgh all the way to Washington, D.C. Not that you want to go there. 330 miles of trail that's paved like this that runs along an old railroad bed. So it's relatively flat, but it goes through the mountains. It's a great way to see a lot of what we're going to see riding the train, but you could do it by bike or hiking, which is, I think, is pretty cool. I wish there was more of that. You got this tourist train here in Cumberland coming out of the canyon. That's a cool thing for rail fans if you're interested in coming here. So for Palmers and rail fans, if you you know, I don't have the gusto to take a big train here. There's other attractions like this tourist train. All right, so this is the very kind of west edge of the Cumberland Yard. You got two main lines here. These are the ones we came in on. These are going towards Pittsburgh. And then over here, the main line that we're interested in taking uh, tomorrow or the next day, the one curving around here, this is going towards Grafton, West Virginia and finally Russell, Kentucky. And it should be epic Appalachian scenery we're hoping for. Now it is only one train a day and we're gonna have to catch it moving so there are some variables uh, making this not a totally certain thing. Rain coming down here in Cumberland on the Grafton line waiting here. There was biblical level rains going on. It's kind of led up here. And what we're seeing is there's some rust on the track. And the thing is, we're debating if that means it's not being used or if it just means a day's worth of rain. And so if you come down here and look, you see this rust. I think that just means it's been rained on for the last day and that trains still run on the track. But we're gonna see because we're down here, we've been here a long time and there's no sign of the train. Uh, I definitely don't want to have to leave a different route out of here because it's going to totally snafu our plan. Alright, so this is going to do it for Cumberland. Uh, we're definitely ready to peace out of here now because unfortunately one of the things we've been finding in these historic old towns, for whatever reason, there's like zero nightlife at all. I mean, you look around here, it's 10 p.m. and this place is deserted. 
there's not a single bar that I've seen here in this. This is the main like little touristy square. Additionally, the uh, gas stations, everything are closed on Sunday that sell beer for some reason. There's absolutely zero possibility of finding beer in this hour. 10 p.m. in this town. That's starting to be a turnoff. Yeah, so I mean, in conclusion, this town's pretty reasonable for cool architecture, lots of trains. I mean, this is a good town for rail fans, foamers, tourists. And uh, the downside is just, you know, there's nothing going on. This is like got to be the slowest train you've ever heard of. This is the speed we've been going for hours up this steep hill. There's got to be some kind of a mountain pass or something ahead. Straight down on the right, straight up on, the, on this side. On the way to Grafton, West Virginia. It's pretty scenic and nice, but it's a major grind. And this is a loud train. Yeah, so basically this train goes slow enough up this hill. I mean, you could get off, maybe go camping and get on the next day's train. I wouldn't make that a hard and fast rule. That'd be a nice meadow right now, there to pitch a tent. You got a little creek there. It seems like it might be the top of the pass here. We're starting to speed up and that's downhill. So let's see what happens now. Right at this bridge. Big rain yesterday, got bright blue sky, super green trees everywhere up here in Appalachian, God's country. This is possibly the steepest mountain pass I've ever gone up or down. All the way up and down this pass, we've got, we got double main line. I think the train is guaranteed to stall if it's coming up here and it has to stop to wait for another train. Look at that train. I mean, this is sweet. It's absolute wilderness back here. Absolutely zero civilization except for a couple homes occasionally. Look at that. Virgin Forest. Modern times has eliminated whatever employees used to work in here. What's going on in here? Yeah, look at all that electronics and who knows. Very musty, pleasant wood smell. So this is Grafton, West Virginia. And I'm not totally clear why there's a yard here where they're actually you know, doing work. I mean, it's extremely hot. And there's a lot of, you can just tell in these forests, it's, you know, infinite amount of biting insects and snakes and stuff. My God, is this another place that doesn't have beer? Nothing to be found anywhere down here as far as beer. 
where you go if you get pulled off. And a grim looking courthouse here. All right, so we just came into Grafton, which has been a great community so far. Everyone's been really friendly to us. And it uh, looks like we've got a beautiful river here. I'm not sure the name of it, but we're gonna head right down there with some cold beer, assuming it's not a dry county, which we haven't figured out yet. And we're gonna enjoy ourselves for yeah. a few hours. This is definitely worth getting off the train here. Let's just see what we've got. Look at all this. We got an ear. Oh my God. Just to just get out of the heat. Nice river, beer. Stop complicating your life so much. You get a 12 pack, you get a river, and you get a positive view on what's going on. Well, 12 pack number one has been cached by the river. Dude, where is the beer? There it is, there's the last one. Introducing Steel Reserve Hard Pineapple. It's two bucks at that gas station, and it's 8%. All right, I mean, you're trashed as shit. Yeah, no, it's that pineapple 211, whatever, you know, <laughs> I don't know. The mixture of the acidity of the pineapple, um, you know, the 8%, it all mixes together. It creates some kind of a toxic mix. I can't handle it. This is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours after we got the pineapple and game over. It's too much. Game and over, that's man. That's all I can say. Game over. Absolute game over. If I can just say there's a limit. You can't just keep drinking forever. It doesn't just stay fun ad infinitum. And that's what we're experiencing right now. You're in Grafton in the darkest hours of the night. What you're seeing here is the general tendency of all these smaller, kind of rustic, historic towns, which is just to basically just be shuttered with the population definitely moving out of here, or at least not anybody moving here. Interesting old historic architecture like this. But this is done. There's nothing going on here anymore. You know, and while certain guys and politicians may think they're gonna bring this back and bring back the blue collar. I mean, this is done. This town is history. I mean, look at this depot. And look at this building. I mean, what happened at these places? These are hundreds of years old. Particularly intrigued by this huge hotel or residence or whatever it is. You can only conjecture what kind of history has happened in this building throughout the years. Not sure if this is Civil War era, but we're right here near the Mason-Dixon line. Here the train yard is totally quiet at night. It's kind of hard to figure out why they've got a yard here. I don't see any industry. I don't see why what they're doing with the cars that are getting cut off here. I mean the railroad has got way bigger operation here than I expected. You got an engine shop, you got a fuel station, you got you know random locomotives just parked here. Alright, what's going on? Day two, Grafton. And uh, after camping here, the problem we're seeing is that the train we came in on, the same train that's going to leave, it's very short and it's, it's making a lot of stops in different towns. It's unsure if there's even going to be a ride on the train, so we're kind of thinking about some other options. I mean, John here, he's thinking hitchhiking might be more reasonable solution out of here. As much as I don't like hitchhiking, we've had a little bit of hassles in the town. It's kind of a small town, so it's hard to stay covert. But if we were to hitchhike, we've got a lot of daylight left. All right, we're giving up. We're gonna go hitchhike. This, this is what happens when you hitchhike. This is where you spend the night, here. Does this look fun to you? This camping out, there's John right there on this freaking on-ramp. All day, we've been trying to get a ride. We started 30 miles north of here, 30 miles in one day. We're still 60 miles from Charleston. In case you don't 
know what that means. It majorly sucks. And I don't want to be here. John doesn't want to be here. We're out of food. There's no place to buy beer anywhere. It's horrible. This is the worst day possible of this trip so far. state looks like here. We got lakes, woods. So this is Charleston, West Virginia here. We got this pretty pleasant river scene going on. There's some kind of music fest going on here. You know, you got your typical brick Interesting architecture. What kind of biker rally going on here? So you've got this capital here and probably honestly it's the only cool thing in the entire city that we've seen so far. Nice gold dome up there at the top. I mean we've been in Charleston, we got here earlier today, finally hitchhiking, which was just crazy. Uh, there's not much exciting going on here. I'm kind of hoping we're gonna be gone soon from here because I mean there's a couple old buildings over here which is pretty decent you got pleasure boating going on a couple guys partying out here that looks kind of fun you got mansions here on the other side but for the most part there's not a lot of wealth in this place and that's the University of Charleston but I just have to say I mean you got some nice architecture you got decent nature some cool buildings, but I mean, if you want something exciting going on, it's just not happening. You got Stonewall Jackson here, standing in repose, 100, however many years after he died. 1863, let's see here. Got some sympathizers here, these are nice. All right, so what's going on here, we know the trains come through here. The hop spot is a ways back there. There's a small yard about three miles that way. We're going to be there later tonight. Here we camped out here last night. Only uh, intermodal trains have been just going straight through that we've seen. There's been nothing stopping. The train that stops here only runs three times a week. So what we're hoping right now, that engine there and that string of cars just got pulled up. We're hoping that the train that does stop here is gonna be here sometime and pick those up. It's like four miles from town. It's a long, distance to go do anything although the beer there's a there's a grocery store with beer and a Burger King fairly nearby and I'm considering making a run right now which means the possibility of the train showing up and me missing it is there what, what are you saying if the train comes we got cell phones uh, help hobos with cell phones we got technology we can get get you back here in time the train's gonna do work no big deal get some nice cold beer so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna make a run for it really interesting seeing what the deals are in different towns. I mean, same as the other gas station, Labatt Blue Tall Can for $1.19. Beer is hard to find anywhere in Canada. And here, I mean, you buy three of them, that's a six pack worth of beer for under four bucks. It's crazy. It's about the only activity going on here, just switching these cars and tinkers back. The situation is not looking good right now. Uh, I'm not sure what to do. There's not really any way to leave this town in a train. So, I'm really sick of hitchhiking. So I don't know what's going to happen. John's fixing to get an Amtrak here. Oh, what's going on? We've got the train that looks like this is the westbound. Right here. Going in to like switch cars and stuff. Those road power units right down there, those big engines. We have to get out of here. This train is only three times a week. It's Friday afternoon right now, so obviously 
there's not going to be another chance until at least Monday. I was just walking up on this overpass to kind of get a look at the train. But there's definitely a crew on. There's two guys in there with neon shirts on. They're pulling a train, guaranteed. Those aren't. Oh yeah, there's a. It, the train goes all the way down to that next overpass. Just to stay out of sight of the train, we're going to cross under the tracks through this culvert. Special ops right here. We gotta walk down this road, we're probably gonna be seen. They're cutting something off, this is the train. Unless it isn't. He's cutting off. We're gonna go pick up another string of cars. Look at this, you can't walk through this with these packs, impossible. This is crazy. Get out now, I mean, it could be 20 minutes until. Well, what I wanna do is get some more beer, but Standing around here is not going to accomplish that or get We've got no escape. I mean, this is a bad zone if a cop shows up. Get on? Yeah. Let's get on. Officially trespassing on railroad property. The cleanest stride I've ever been on. I don't know what this chute here does. Look at this thing. It's probably some kind of super toxic chemical or something. It comes out of there. Bidding now if John should go get beer while we're on the train. It's. It just seems to be sitting here, we're talking about it. It's one of those choices that, I mean, it's gonna make the train leave if he goes and gets beer, it's guaranteed. Right now, the the train's not connected. The engines are still shuffling cars around in the yard. So, I mean, it's, it's doable. You think this is some glorious thing? It's not, it's just a lot of waiting. We're out of beer. I don't know where the beer store is. It's not worth the risk to run to get one. All right, it looks like we're finally out of Charleston. got going on here is a very substantial classification yard and just a, a pretty small quaint little town this is a little more common with CSX and out on the east where you've got a pretty huge yard it's fairly important but the town nearby is tiny I mean you can think of Selkirk and up in Albany I mean it's way out in the fields you got Hamlet North Carolina once again enormous yard tiny little town it can be kind of an issue because there's definitely no other way out of this town than on a train so you know if you get pulled off by the bull and you're frightened and you don't know what to do i don't know how to get out of here there's not an interstate there's nothing which actually i kind of like here over to here a couple other streets is basically the whole town i don't know what the cops are doing here isn't that sweet Usually, I thought there was like a bank robbery going on because you got these squad cars here. It's just a, a little community race here in Russell, Kentucky. It's definitely clear from the amount of cops here that there's more than enough in case you get called in. These small towns, it's pretty much a fact you're going to get on the shit list of the police. The instant they see you in dirty clothes with a pack. And a bunch of cops just saw me walk past, and I'm pretty relaxed about it, but I, I'm pretty sure I'm on the list now. They don't have my pack, and they can't really just stop me for doing nothing, that's why I'm kind of nonchalant, but I could tell. I'm on the list. Hopefully be out of this town today, and, uh, you know, get off that list and onto another one in some other small town. So probably the most scenic part of this area 
There's Russell. There's the Ohio River, and over here you got Ironton, Ohio. Quick walk over here, and uh, interestingly enough, there's also a busy main line over here. This one is Norfolk Southern. So this is Ironton, and uh, <clears throat> pretty much nothing going on here. There's very few people under 50, and most of the shops and everything are already boarded up like a lot of towns in more rural Ohio. But the one positive main attraction I would say is that for rail fans, if you want to do a rail fan trip to this area, right on the other side of the river you got Russell with CSX. And then coming through town here you got a pretty busy Norfolk Southern main line. <laughs> could do maybe a three-day rail fan trip get Fostoria the first day then come down here so in Charleston it was Labatt Blue which surprisingly it's actually here in Ohio but what I've seen in Ohio for the best deal look at this 24 ounce can honey brown 99 cents just another sign of how moronic things are getting today the pedestrian part of the bridge has been closed over the river. For some reason it's, you know, people walking don't matter. It's assumed in this day and age that everybody's got a car. Pedestrians prohibited. Well, fuck you. Not sure who's gonna give me the citation on this bridge being that it's dividing two states. Look at this, they cut the stairs off. They got this fence for no apparent reason whatsoever. Not any sign of some kind of architectural issue. All right, so we've covered Russell, Kentucky, as well as Ironton, Pennsylvania. We found that they're both quaint little towns just across the Ohio from each other, mainly inhabited by septuagenarians. We've also found some good deals on beer in Ohio and uh, that, you know, things look pretty community-oriented here in Russell. So now let's talk about the plan here. What's going on next? Well, first, First plan is to enjoy this cold beer on this 95 degree day here in June in Northern Kentucky. Uh, it's hot, gotta maintain hydration, and the first thing is just gonna be to chill and relax at this nice little park. Right here, look at this, I mean this is nice. So as far as the trains go from here, I haven't actually decided if I'm gonna go east or west. So. I'm going to post at some point over in the yard where the stack train stops. I saw one last night. It only stopped for about five minutes. And it appears there's only about one per day here. So if that doesn't work, I'm looking at getting a train west to Cincinnati or Columbus. Well, the lightning bugs are out here on the Ohio. And uh, me and John are discussing. He's got to go. He's got stuff he's got to do. I got stuff I gotta do, and uh, we may split up this evening. So I'm looking at, again, I mean, I may go east, I may go west, it depends on the train, being a reasonable train. John's going west, towards Chicago, and uh, that's the way it's gonna be. It's been a good run here. We it's a reasonable town, $1.19 ice house. As negative as things could seem with my clothes that basically smell like an open grave. You got all these nice glow bugs out here, just seeming cheerful. Right here on the Ohio. It's the darkest hours of the night. Russell, Kentucky. Board this 
single stack container train. I believe it's going to Norfolk, Virginia, hopefully. One east should be going back through Charleston. It's about four in the morning. I'm just gonna hit the hay, but I think we'll get some decent scenery on this train over the Appalachians. I'm not in the best car. It's called a, this is a Viking ship container car, but it'll have to do. Gotta get out of here. Back to Charleston. The only better way to see it, full speed. Passing through the foggy Appalachians. These woods. This is wild country this train's passing through. Thick, super deciduous woods. And look at the size of that river. What river is that? Wow. Look at this waterfall. Massive. This canyon, winding canyon up here, crossing some kind of big old lake or river out here. Look at this thing. Guys, John boat up there fishing for cover. Whoa, look at that bridge! Stop next to this river a little outside of Clifton Forge. I'm gonna just get in and try to take a nice swim and see what happens. That's a little ways from the road. I'm not exactly sure where we're stopped. So I may get left here, but it's a pretty nice spot. Well, there it goes. But I gotta get in here. It's just so hot and miserable on the train right now. That is nice. Looks like it's about to rain and I'm gonna get soaked. It's a good thing to be in here. This is what you've got around here. Very near Clifton Forge, Virginia. Just wild rivers, which you don't expect to see if you don't know about the Appalachians, but usually it's out west where you see this. That was refreshing. Look at that river. That said, it's going to be a fairly significant hike back this direction to where the, the highway crosses. So that's what you got to deal with. It was just so hot, I, I just had no choice. What's going on here in Eagle Rock? About an hour and a half walk from that river spot. And uh, faced with a couple choices here. The first option would be hitchhiking south to Roanoke on 220. Roanoke's got a busy Norfolk Southern Yard with tons of trains going in a bunch of different directions. The other option would be to hitchhike north, back where I just came from, to Clifton Forge, which is a crew change. I think I'm gonna choose Roanoke. Hopefully I can get a ride today and be down there waiting at the yard today. going on just got 
one ride all the way completely into town from that isolated spot up in the mountains to Roanoke. The positive news here is there's a lot of trains. There's, I mean, look at this. You got main lines here, main lines here, and I'm not sure yet where they go, but I'm gonna figure it out. I'm trying to go south. So you got a lot of tracks, and there's probably a lot of trains coming through here. I know there's some junctions south of here. It's very likely I'm just going to have to gamble. I don't have any idea how to tell which way the train's going. I'm trying to go south. They all go kind of south, west-ish. There's trains that can cut up to Chicago. There's Memphis trains, and then there's New Orleans trains that are going to go to Atlanta. It's my understanding. They're all going to be pulling out here. And at some point, I probably am just gonna have to gamble and get on a train. So, I'm gonna sit it, you know, hope, try to see if there's some way to tell. The same as with any other gambler's luck, like at the blackjack table, if there's a way to somehow get the right train, because I don't wanna go back to Chicago. Well, it's nice that in this day and age, there's still original Americana style places surprisingly good deals. This is one place. At this convenient little gate here that's open. So nothing's on too much lockdown. This here, right here, this is a westbound. And then you look down there and you got an eastbound parked. So it's, this is the general area Things are looking reasonable. I mean, I was just trying to get out of here, but it's not bad beer in a second day. I think in the morning, things take on a little more pleasant light. I mean, you got these mountains, forested woodsy mountains over there. Those are kind of nice. June 13th, 2016. And uh, just kind of running into a couple issues here. Uh, first of all, I'd say the main problem is not where to get on the train. It's been determined, it's pretty basic. There's not a lot of security. But it's, where is your train gonna go? So here, where this is the very east edge of things here. I mean, you got all these mains up here splitting off. I'm pretty sure this, these ones follow 81 up to Harrisburg. And I'm pretty sure this one goes to Norfolk, maybe Richmond. That's pretty clear. Trains are going too fast at this junction. You are, you're committed. Where you get on is about a mile and a half that way. This just kind of showcases one of the problems with riding out on the East Coast. The distances, they're not super far. I mean, you could drive to New York City or Miami from here in probably eight hours, or Chicago. But to get to these places on a train, it's a lot more complicated. West, the distances are way bigger. But I can get on a train, an intermodal stack train in Oakland, and know the train is going the distance to Chicago. So I can just get on, I'll be there in three days tops. Here, I'm just trying to get to Atlanta. But between this junction down here, the junction 40 miles west of town that the trains are gonna be hitting at full speed. In conclusion, even though the distances in the west are much bigger, the lines are direct with far fewer forks out right in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of gambling that goes on. You just don't know which way your train is going to hit the junction at 50 mph. So as far as the plan from here, Roanoke, I may just get some beer and get on the next train. It seems like in the one spot I was looking at, you could probably get a train in either direction. I just think the most important thing right now is getting out of this town. I've been here about a day. Not blending in. There's a lot of people seeing me walk around with this handy cam in town. I just, I, I don't want to be here anymore. So that may mean north or south. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough, only about 10 minutes later, unfortunately, before I could buy any beer, look who's pulling in slow. On board the train. Not sure which way we're going, but we're leaving Roanoke, so that's the good news. Out. Alright, we're 
switching tracks. It's made me a Norfolk train. Very well, looks like we're taking the right fork at that junction. There's the tracks going off to the left. And we're making a right, so this could be good. It may go to Richmond, and that's, I can get to Atlanta from Richmond. There's a beer store right there. Agonizing, I want beer so bad and I got none. Looking another going off the main onto this freaking track here. Oh, what the hell is going on? I'm not gonna do this line again. This is just too much work. What's going on here? So the train stopped here for no apparent reason. And uh, it does that a lot. It's no big deal, but this is a good time maybe to talk about how I can get an idea where I'm going. Norfolk Southern on their webpage, they got this map. Now if you look at Roanoke, you know, you got that north straight north. That's up 81 to Harrisburg. It looks like you got two eastbounds. I don't know what they're doing. Richmond, there's forks in there. We're going east of Roanoke, all right? Now as far as, like, what is we're gonna do at these, where these cross, the train may go north or south at one of those. They may continue on to uh, Richmond. Just looking at the map. But, I mean, some important concepts to point out. I'd say the one telltale thing about this train, you got CP Rail Greeners. That's Canadian Pacific. No echo at all. They're loads, which means they're coming from Canada. Which means, since they're coming from Canada, they were probably interchanged in Chicago. That's just where CP interchanges with Norfolk Southern. And if they're interchanged there, there'd be no reason for them to take this route to go north. Because Norfolk Southern has an additional route through, uh, you know, Elkhart, Indiana, over to Cleveland, and going up through Harrisburg. There'd be no reason for these cars to be going north here. There's a faster way to send these. So the options are, they're going to Richmond, Norfolk. They could be going to Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm not sure. It's possible this train could go south to Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't know. I don't think it could go as far as Atlanta because I think there's another route that goes down there. But I think this is gonna get us closer to where we wanna be. Definitely a daredevil move, but right here, just where the train stopped, I don't know why the train stopped. We got a beer store. I've never had anything work out this good, but there's no time to waste. Let's see here. Oh, this is one of those things that works out this time, right by the river. I think the train may be crew changing down here. They pulled it through the yard. Cause we just stopped. I just got beer. It's like a hundred degrees out and this cold beer is like, <sighs> it's just amazing. Doesn't get more convenient than a stop like this, folks. It's not gonna happen. Beer store, river, on a hot day, and the train is right there up the hill. Not a moment too soon. We are out of here, and It's 
going on? Stove the Hobo well into North Carolina. Some interesting developments. My train is pulled off the mains. It's up there. This is this is no in the absolute middle of nowhere. My train. It's looking like it's gonna dead end here, break up or something. But here's what's interesting. This stack just pulled in on the mains out here in the woods. And I think I can just get on this and continue. This is well north of Charlotte still. So this is part of the deal if you get on a general manifest train, the thing may just, especially out east. I don't know why it's out east especially where they, they put these yards way out here. There's nothing out here. So I guess I'll just get on that. It's going to the southeast, guaranteed. Uh, Atlanta. I mean, I could be there fast. I'd like to get off in Charlotte and just see what's going on there. I'm surprised how fast this process has been to get down there from Roanoke. I thought it was going to be multi-day. I just kind of lucked out in this instance. I'm already past Charlotte. I wanted to get off there, but I think I just slept through and kind of one of the issues on these train trips. The train shows up, you gotta get up at all kinds of weird hours, which means you might, you know, not be well rested and you might miss something because you're too tired and you sleep through it. Either the train shows up and you're tired and you miss it or you just sleep through the crew chain. So it looks like Atlanta is possible today. Staying on this train, guaranteed I'll be there today. It's pretty pleasant here. It's a lot of woods, nothing real exciting. Just another one of these intermodal facilities way out in the country. This is between Spartanburg and Greenville. And there's nothing out here again. You just gotta pray to God your, your train doesn't pull in here. You gotta make sure you're off the train if it does. The train's got EMP and uh, Hub Group and JB Hunt, which I see none of in here, fortunately. This is just one of the dangers with intermodal that's starting to happen is they're building more and more of these facilities way, way the hell outside the city limits. Fortunately, again, this looks like it's only ocean containers. I don't see any 53-foot JB Hunt or Hub Group or EMP or any of those. You're locked in there with major barbed wire. Super cameras everywhere. Nuts. Go to Greenville, South Carolina. It doesn't look like there's a lot going on in this town at all. The city center over there, Greenville. Approaching Atlanta, it shouldn't be too far to Atlanta from here. And uh, the scenery is pretty decent. It was really boring in South Carolina. I didn't see anything even worth recording, but I mean, look at this trestle. That is, and the thing about these trestles is there's no freaking guardrail on these things. Usually out west, you can walk. Not here, forget it. Although you do have two tracks. But, I mean, either way, I don't know how they work on this trestle. How do you, you know, fix the track out here? Look at this, I mean, you gotta be roped in. A lot of country music stars from somewhere around here. Helen Jackson is from close by this area. Leonard Skinner, they're from Macon. That's not super far from here. And I think there's a ton of other, and I can't remember right now, but I mean, this is the kind of environment that those guys are living in.
going into Atlanta on this Norfolk Southern double stack train coming in from the north. And uh, should be getting ready to, to stop and get off pretty soon. There's a lot of MARTA trains. So I mean, MARTA can get you anywhere you need to go in this town. Well, this seems as good a place as any. <laughs> Dropped off right at the Amtrak station. First class treatment all the way from Norfolk Center. Dropped off right at the passenger depot. Awesome. <laughs> folks stove the hobo here in atlanta georgia on june 21st 2016. remarkably this is the summer solstice and also it's a full moon tonight which uh, makes for a good time as good a time as any to be part in this city so the situation is as follows i've been in atlanta uh, at one of my crash pads i have a nationwide network of crash pads so i can just travel around and not pay any rent and mooch off other people and it's pretty nice honestly but uh, the crash pad situation here just ended so now it's time to head to my uh, Rocky Mountain West crash pad which is in Denver Colorado so this is gonna be a pretty interesting task uh, first of all it's gonna be all new rails on the way out there all new I haven't traveled Atlanta West whatsoever you know, in some of the episodes, maybe you can tell which ones. I've been on the route before, and I know where the trains go. Well, that's not the case here. So the plan is to head to Denver via New Orleans, beginning from here on CSX, heading southwest through uh, Montgomery, Mobile to New Orleans, and then there uh, to catch a BNSF, hopefully, intermodal train through Houston up to Clovis, New Mexico. And then from Clovis, another train to Amarillo, and then from Amarillo, I can get another train to Denver. Out here in the east, uh, it's not quite as much of an incentive to ride freight trains, honestly. I was just looking on the internet and Megabus, you can actually get a Megabus from here to New Orleans. That's almost halfway what I'm trying to do. It's only 39 bucks. But then I thought about it and first of all, That'd be unworthy of a YouTube video. It probably wouldn't be that interesting. And you know, thirty-nine dollars—that's enough for a fair amount of beer. You could just buy beer with that instead on this trip. A recent study, I think it was from the Smithsonian that came out recently, said that unemployed people uh, drink more alcohol than employed people. And being that I'm unemployed, I think the prudent decision would be to save the thirty-nine dollars for that bus and spin it on the beer. Pretty simple, just follow Marietta Street all the way out. You'll cross some tracks and you'll find it. I'm here at the uh, Marietta Street, just a little bit north. And we've got here is the mains. Let's go in north, let's go into Chicago, I think, that double stack. And then you got this guy here, trying to stay discreet, going south. I'm not sure if he's going my way or not. I'm gonna try to figure it out. And I could just get on the train right here. We've got this train airing up right now. I haven't even gotten to the catch-out spot. I guess this is the catch-out spot if I get on this train. It's facing south. Just aired up. The question is, should I just get on this grainer and throw caution to the wind? I'm trying to look under here. It's a pretty long train. Folks, let's do it. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Stoby Jim Kenobi, peacing out of Atlanta. I can't believe this luck. Wherever it goes, I didn't waste any time waiting at all. I wasn't even to the frickin' place where they usually stop. I think this one was just waiting for that double stack to come on the other side. Didn't even have time to put on my other clothes. These nice shorts are gonna get trashed. It's nice to not waste any time. 
I mean, no time was wasted. I showed up, here's the train, it leaves. And that's the kind of luck that's been going on so far in this trip. Don't pass up a free train, folks. It could be a while until the next one comes along. As soon as the whole train is on the main line, we're gonna book it. Pretty sure this is the CNN parking structure right here. So that's kind of interesting. because that sure looks like a capitol building. Well, I don't know if it's the solstice or the moon, full moon solstice thing going on, but the good luck just continues. All the way down to Montgomery, and I've never been in a state we're at three in the morning. You can still buy a cold one in the gas station. But here we are, Alabama. So I guess the first one. And then you got these. These chicken tenders are, these are se like severely delicious too. What's going on? Stove the Hobo here in Montgomery. So it's a super historic city. Uh, I'd say mostly in the regard of going back to the slave trade and then the civil rights movement. The uh, racist governor, George Wallace, worked right out of here. And uh, all the other racists who were in charge of the state, you know, up until things evened out a little bit in the 60s. You got Martin Luther King appearances here. You got marches, all that kind of stuff up and down this I think this is Dexter Street. You got little informational signs all over the place telling you about the, you know, civil rights movement, all that kind of stuff. So right where this fountain is, just a little bit down from the Capitol building, uh, I guess there was a slave market here. I'd have to say though, I mean, that's pretty much all done, as well as anything kind of interesting or exciting. The place list looks just deserted these days. I mean, I think the fact that Stove the Hobo arrived on the solstice of the full moon in June 2016. It's probably the most interesting thing to happen to this city in years. So this is Montgomery and uh, you know I gotta say I mean there's some cool history stuff with the civil rights and some of the civil war. This is the first confederate capital. I'm kind of disappointed because right now in 2016 there's just there's here at all. I mean, I thought, you know, 
looking at it on a map, I thought maybe there'd be a cool restaurant down here, or a cool jazz club, or something. And it's just devoid. State Capitol building and legislators and stuff is probably worth, you know, two hours. This original Jefferson Davis White House is a pretty reasonable stop. Best of all, free of charge. Day, there's nothing going on nothing of interest at all going on here so I think you could pretty much knock the whole thing out in one day which I've about done so as far as rail traffic coming through here you got a pretty interesting situation I'm here uh, north kind of northeast of the downtown but right here it's not a, not a big town and you got here is this junction so as you can see over here any train coming off there is coming from Birmingham and this track over there that leads to Atlanta. I think it was two separate railroads at some point and you got a yard right up there and right up there. I jumped off last night a little ways up there. These main lines converge here and then about a mile and a half that way where I'm going to be waiting the rails again split. I'm hoping that the train will be going slow enough at the split. I don't know which ones go in which direction. I'm trying to go towards Mobile slash NOLA. It's possible the other split goes to Waycross, Georgia, which is way out of the way. All right, folks, well, that's Montgomery. Time to keep going. Just gonna go grab some beer and uh, get in position for the next train to Mobile. Stove out. Pretty sure this is the right train. There's some kind of split, which I'm a little confused by, but I'm pretty sure this is the right train. That is good. going on stub the hobo way way down south it's just been going through this for like hours and hours and hours just it's like jungle down here it's great this is this is a great area to go to just you definitely don't want to like hike through this area this is the best way to go through here you don't want to camp out in this kind of area the mosquitoes are Absolutely atrocious. I mean, just look at how thick these woods are. If there's not a trail, I wouldn't venture off into these woods. I'm not trying to just toot my own horn here. I really think the best way to go through here is on the cargo train. Just objectively speaking, you know, it's too far out of this if you go through on the road. But you go through on the cargo train, I mean, you can see all kinds of stuff. Snakes. All kinds of cool birds flapping around in the treetops. It's pretty awesome. I thought it'd be 
a good time to do like a little disclaimer on don't don't get too drunk. I'm I'm a, I've been drinking Colt 45 and Steel Reserve, and it's like I don't think it's a good idea to get too wasted because if the cops show up, it's it's a hopeless game right now. I'm just gonna immediately give up and cave in cops. Uh, additionally, I might miss the stop. Mobile. I want to get off there. Not in a big rush. And right now, I'm so trashed, I don't know what is going to happen. Now, I've got the judgment. I'm not going to climb around on the wheels. I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm not going to get run over by the train. Just rolled into Mobile Yard. And I gotta say, this is definitely the most high security yard I've ever seen of CSX by far. Cameras all over the place. Now it's dark. It's dark right now, so I think everything's cool, but I'm definitely gonna need to find a place somewhere other than just walking in here for the return the uh, to continue the trip out of here. I guess I could just come in here at night. This is lockdown. It's ridiculous. I mean, it took, I don't know how it took so long to get down here. It's 170 miles and it's three. See, I don't know if you can see on the other side of the train, there's barbed wire, total lockdown. So I'm trying to figure out how to get out of the yard right now. I may be trapped in here. You got this train pulling out. There's the yard on it. There's the yard on it. And you look, there's no way out without getting spotted. So this is impossible in the daytime. And it may be impossible in the nighttime. If I was not out of water, I might just get back on the train. What's going on? Stub the hobo here in Mobile. Uh, got in super late. And uh, currently just kind of figuring out the train yard situation. There's a lot of trains. I guess CN runs out of here, which I didn't know. That's over here. So the main issue going on, uh, it's looking like this is nighttime only to access the catch spot. Because what you've got happening is, uh, I'm here, very south edge of the yard. And what you need is to be up here. If you can see, that stop train there. Basically, the, the main lines where the, the trains are stopping are inaccessible from one side. You've got the Alabama State Docks, which is on some kind of major security thing. They've got high-tech cameras, everything. So you can't get in from that side. So to get in from this side, you're gonna have to just basically be seen and walk in front of the yard office. And I'm gonna have to probably do that at night. So this is Mobile, and it's actually one of the more pleasant stops I've found. You've got this nice bay leading out to the Gulf, with what I'm sure is pretty pleasant temperature water. Unfortunately, there's not a beach super close. In addition to being a cool town for trains, it's also pretty cool if you're into ships. you got all these shipyards here. Looks like most of them are pretty busy at the moment. was the original home of Mardi Gras. They got a lot of French influence going on. I haven't been in New Orleans yet, but I mean, maybe this kind of looks like that. You know, this little park. What's going on? Stub the Hobo getting ready to uh, depart Mobile. And uh, fortunately, it's looking like a lot of uh, New Orleans trains are coming out and stopping here on the main lines outside the yard. Behind this one that's backing up, I'm pretty sure that one behind it is the right train. I even think there's a crew on board. Hopefully this, this other yard train will get out of the way and I can get on this thing and continue moving further west. Taking off out of Mobile. 
the train was, I was going to stay a bit longer, but it was just parked on the main lines outside the yard. So, here we go. So it's, a, it's not a bad town. I mean, you got a nice waterfront, which is probably the coolest part. And it's right near the train tracks. And then you just got the downtown right here. here on the train and I think that uh, I think we're like in the city limits possibly look at this swamp I mean this is this is crazy obviously there's no way to get off the property that way yeah it stopped here late last night and uh, has just been kind of sitting here so I'm getting all my stuff packed up getting ready to just walk off but I'm not positive where this is but I think that it's close enough to get a local bus into town. <sighs> Time to walk. All right, I think this is it. The train is tied down here. Definitely swampy out here. There's a lot of, a lot of mud. I would not venture off the rails due to the guarantee of the swamp crocodile situation. Restaurants like this means You've arrived at your destination.
What's going on? Stoke the Hobo here in Nolens. Just kind of doing some sightseeing. It's super hot out here. I'm definitely getting fatigued. I'm kind of confused why this is an indoor stadium considering the weather here is pretty much never that dastardly to prevent playing football. i just like to point out that at this juncture in the journey, I am super fried right now. I've been going on very little sleep. Uh, erratic schedules the last three or four days. And I'm just about out of energy, completely, on this trip. I've been thinking of wimping out, just getting a bus or some other way home, but just for the sake of seeing the mission through, uh, I've still got a lot more trains to go and it's starting to get a little bit disheartening. I mean, I've got to get a train from here past Houston is the first train. And I'm not sure, honestly, how that's gonna work. I'm pretty sure BNSF will get me uh, a double stack out of their yard, should be going hopefully to LA. Now, I'm not gonna go that far, but it'll get me through Houston at least. I mean, this is serious. This is gonna be like maybe a train I'm gonna have to stay on for at least 24 hours. So I'm gonna need a lot of provisions, a lot of beer, and just to be prepared. I think the fun of the trip is just about over and uh, it's time to just book it to Colorado. I'm, I'm burned out, you know? I've seen a whole bunch of new places on this trip. I just don't really care anymore about seeing anything else. <laughs> starting to be a rundown vibe to this town. As you can see, you got a lot of businesses just kind of hanging on by threads. A lot of just big, grand, vacant buildings right now going on here in the downtown. You got this building, probably the most interesting architecture in the whole city. But honestly, I think it's getting demolished right now. Doesn't look like it's in use. These windows are all broke up there. It's rivaling the Great Pyramids for architectural, you know, eccentricity at least. Look at that penthouse on top of that thing. At this old former hospital, look at this thing. I would love to get inside this right now. staying at this hostel here it's only 20 bucks a night and it's pretty decent it's bunk beds uh, they've got a pool even the people are pretty reasonable there's hardly anybody here right now either so that's India house hostel it's right up the street 
Here's Canal, where the streetcar goes. And here's the hostel, so it's a pretty good deal. understand why this street has such an amazing reputation. It's pretty much just the same tourist schlock as you find in any other place. You know, you got hard rock, you got drunk people, you know. Everything's way overpriced down here and not super recommended if you're on a budget. I mean, this is still pretty weak. It's supposed to be the most powerful drink here, but I could probably drink two or three and still drive. So this street is pretty much more touristy with all rock and blues kind of bands going. My personal taste warrants going further down to uh, Frenchman, where the guaranteed jazz facilities are. What the hell is going on out here? It's definitely kind of a sinister vibe right now in the vicinity of all these jazz clubs. I'm just getting blitzkrieged, literally, by this super storm going on right now between the main two clusters of jazz clubs here. As you can see, this is... Wow! This is definitely, I'd say, a good setup for some Eric Dolphy or some Miles Davis. Something with that real gloomy sound. This is not appropriate for Errol Garner or Fat Swaller. That's way too cheerful. This is grim out here. Look at this. Kapow! I mean, I'll just say, you know, I mean, I'll add my own input to the thousands of narratives written about this city, there's definitely a vibe going on. That's, it's definitely here. There's a vibe of, you know, grave sites, spirits coming out right now. Just all kinds of weird, uh, you know, very gloomy things. And uh, I get it, it's going on here. It is, it's been authentic in the last couple minutes here. I mean, who's this guy? Is that a real guy or is that just some phantom? Yeah, the atmosphere is definitely augmented by this hand grenade drink. Wow! Oh, you missed that. Wow. It looks like things are going to clear up and I can get down to Frenchman Street to hear hopefully some very gloom infused jazz. So like I was saying, there there is an authentic presence of something very interesting here that remains despite the presence of so many white corpulent tourists. I mean, this is authentic. Whoa, and there's a train. Where's the train? I don't even know where the train is here, but there's a train coming. Beginning of the main jazz zone is right here. It's just a little bit. This is Decatur, right in the middle of this storm. I know both of you. 
This is Frenchman, and you've got about, I don't know, 12 to 15 non-stop clubs here, and all of them have pretty good bands going on. I would just say, I mean, don't waste your time going anywhere else if you want to hear serious you know, jazz music. It's just not going on anywhere else in America on this level. So don't waste your time in, I don't know where else, I don't even know where else. Just get down here. Just when you think it can't get more interesting, it does. Freight trains come right through here. That's Frenchman. That's Jazz Central beginning there. There's the downtown, whatever. And this track I'm on, I'm pretty sure they come through. We've got Grainers here, guaranteed. Something dropped them off here. It's going east. Taking a couple of beers in one of these places. Just kind of thinking about the trip ahead. It's about time to bounce out of New Orleans. And I'm kind of getting discouraged. It's going to be a major trip to Denver. There's like. It's gonna take at least four trains. There's like 10, 15 junctions ahead. Not that many, but there's like five. And if I go the wrong way, I end up in some crappy place like Fort Worth or Lafayette or somewhere else. This is the time in the trip where it's just time to book. I don't want to sightsee anymore. My morale is kind of low. I'm starting to get lifted by her in this band, but I mean, I've been out here getting bit by mosquitoes and sweating my ass off and smelling like a fucking cave for a solid month. And, uh, you know, so it's going to take a train from here that I'm hoping is going to go well into Texas. Another, it's going to take three or four trains. First train to Clovis in Mexico. So they expedite from the... Second train to Amarillo, third train to Denver is the minimum. I'm thinking it's going to take more than that. There's so many junctions. I don't know, I've never done this before. But if you're hearing all these bands, I'm seeing this situation down here, I think it would just be really chickening out to take a bus or a plane back to Colorado. I've got enough money in my savings I could get a cheap flight. I just wouldn't be in accordance with the situation. All these bands are playing, you gotta, you gotta stay true. And the guys playing in these bands, I think, would say, take the train, take the A train, or in this case, the B train, because it's going to be BNSF, We're back to Colorado. So I think I'm getting enough energy and inspiration from these bands. Uh, I think it's possible. I think I can do it. I'm going to be heading over to the train yard fairly soon and uh, making tracks on the tracks out of here. Still be Jim Kennedy. Yeah, so like I was saying, I mean, my morale, it's low. I mean, I haven't showed that much of what's been going on. We're talking mosquitoes, we're talking incredible humidity and heat, freaking you know, the smell coming off my clothes like an open grave. And I was really thinking about wimping out. 
and just like getting a bus back, or, like a plane. But I'm down here in this area, I'm thinking, you know, we got a lot of just guys devoted to their craft. It is not my craft to sit on a bus or a plane with a bunch of corpulent tourists. I'm just thinking, there's no other option than going back on the cargo train. There's nothing else that can be done. When you look at this, when you hear these bands, there's only one option. And I should just say, the spirits, the train gods, they've been with me on this trip. I've never wanted for cold beer. The last three trains, I've had like a four pack of 16 ounce steel reserves right when I get on the train. So I mean, everything's going great on that. I'm going home on the train. And that's, I think I'm glad to have come down here and been able to solidify that decision. All right, folks, well, this is pretty much concluding my time here in New Orleans. It's a pretty nice town. There's a lot of good tunes. There's also a lot of other touristy stuff like swamp tours and alligators and stuff if you're into that. Obviously, I don't really have the funds to just go, you know, spend a hundred dollars here and there on tours. I tried some of the drinks, sampled some of the tunes, and uh, it's time to keep going. Tomorrow, uh, the final leg of the trip to Denver from here. It's going to be an exhausting leg. It's going to be a lot of work. I'm really kind of dreading it right now, honestly. Well, folks, I've had a good time here in New Orleans. I'm inspired by all this great music. I've had some of the food here. Pretty, pretty good time. Time has now come to move along. There's Frenchman, and there is the train tracks. There's a freight train rolling through this freaking town right here, man. Look at this. It's like a, is this really happening?
Puerto de Hobo, Avondale, which is quite a decent distance from NOLA. It's like, that was like a two or three hour bus trip. Two separate buses that get down here. So as you've got supplies and provisions you can buy right here. And then at the very end of this street is the train yard. So this is a pretty reasonable spot where you got the yard here and then Big Muddy here. It's another name for the Mighty Mississippi didn't know that. I'd say the only issue is it's definitely going to be a mosquito central after dark. Also it doesn't look like this yard is as busy as I was hoping. There's just a bunch of cars sitting around. I haven't seen any activity. So I'm hoping down at the yard throat here I can get on. Up in here it looks like you got security and you got fences and stuff so hopefully they just pull out slow. So like I said I'm going to be on this train possibly more than 24 hours so we're going to need extra provisions. This seems appropriate drink for New Orleans. Let's get some of these. So I've got a major amount of supplies. I got fried chicken. I got this cheap wine. I got hurricane. I got a, I got this for loco gold. And what else? It's going to be at least 24 hours on the train. I've got to be stocked up. Unfortunately, it's probably not all going to be cold by the time I drink it, but that's life. So now I'm pretty much ready to just head over to the yard and hit park. Next BNSF double stack train out of here I am on. the same position as the last report a couple hours later and I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna divert already from the plan and get on this Union Pacific I think they're building this right here long story short I mean the situation on here is absolutely virulent mosquitoes well all of a sudden things that got pretty crazy here I think I want to get on this stack but this asshole is backing up and doing work, and I didn't see the engines on this. Well, I missed it because of this guy here parked right there. Right as the other train passed. So you can see, this asshole turned his bright light on. Quick update. I, just because I gotta change the plan, due to some I mean, there's supposed to be BNSF double stacks leaving out of this yard. I've seen absolutely no activity in that intermodal yard. So, I'm on UP, meaning I'm going to have to change trains to Houston, guaranteed. I, I just can't spend, the mosquitoes are so bad. dense out there. I'm just dreading if it's going to get dark. If it gets dark and we're still in this, again, it's just mosquito, absolute mosquito infestation. But again, I don't get what is going on, but this, I, this, is, this is the speed. The train has just been going at this speed. I don't know if there's an old woman driving it. I don't know if there's track problems, but I mean, I'm just counting the mileposts. I'm about 160 miles from New Orleans at well over 12 hours after leaving. I really hate to say it, but I'm not having fun so far. 
at all. It's super hot, I'm getting low on water. The whole time you could just jump off the train. It's going this speed. It's ridiculous. This train has gone about 40 miles since we changed the crew at 6 in the morning. You know? Well, here we are again. Stopped for absolutely zero reason. I've been on this train about 18 hours and I've gone like 200 miles. It's just, it's really ridiculous. It's making me question like what is going on with this. I mean, I've never been on a train that's gone this slow for, for this long. The problem that's coming is that when it gets dark, there's gonna be merciless mosquitoes. Grim times, June 30th, somewhere in the Louisiana swampy areas. Out. All right, the train is finally in Texas, and finally we're going fast. Hopefully we in Houston before the beer stores close. This has got to be the worst train I've, I can remember being on. It's going to be more than 24 hours to Orleans, Houston, and that's in a car, and that's like a five-hour drive. It's ridiculous. I'm getting so worn out right now. It's not worth it. This is not worth the time. It's not worth spending a day to be stuck in these swamps. This is this Beaumont, Texas. For whatever reason, they can't go through Beaumont at more than freaking five and eight. Police station right there. Look at that. This actually looks not bad. We could just get off. We could just get off. Give up on this piece of shit train. I, I'm so sick of this thing. The train is stopped in one of these just, you know, jungles of swamp, you know, here. And the insects, I mean, you're not, I don't know if you can get the real impression of what's going on with the insects, but you can hear. You hear those? There's just like, you know, hundreds of thousands of mosquitoes per acre here. And uh, as long as the train stopped, just gotta deal with the situation here. I'm done with the South. I'm done with this. This is exasperating. I long to be away from insects right now. And it's so hot you can't get in your sleeping bag. Forget it. Because you'd have to completely cover your face with the bag. I should I could have brought insect repellent, but I'm totally exasperated. I'm just getting bit. Bit, 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 bit. All night long out here until this train gets going. And that could be another, could be another hour. Could be three hours the way this thing's been going. All right, pulling into Houston. Just pulling right, there's the UP hump yard. Right here. Cars, a lot of different tankers getting humped on that. So what happened is a BN, BNSF train on the same line came up and stopped and then started going again and I'm on that. So now I've switched railroads and I think I'm going south. I'll end up at a BN yard which is what I want to get to. There's the cityscape and all that. I don't really, I don't really got the energy about going and seeing another huge city. This is the kind of crazy BS you gotta deal with sometimes. Fortunately, I'm really glad that it's nighttime. Looks like that train just went straight through town. Hopefully we're just gonna keep on going.
Waco, Texas. Completely out of water and food. So definitely a good time to resupply. Definitely looks like it's quite a walk into town, but absolutely no choice at this point. Don't want to go through the, the heat of the day like this with no water, food, nothing. Look at this sky right here. Look at this. We're in Central TX, folks. I'm down to get some beer, hang out for a little bit. It's gonna be so obvious to the sheriff when I get, if I walk in from this direction like this, what's been going on. It is mega hot. This is also an area I guarantee if you're walking around with a big pack on, you're gonna get too much attention. So I had to ditch that. I'm probably still, just the fact that you're walking just gets your attention in places like this. Look, there's no, nobody walks at all. If you're not in a car, it's suspicious in towns like this. You know, a lot of people have that Texas pride and that just proud to be Texas and all this stuff. Well, clearly those people aren't from here. This is one of the most pointless places I've ever seen. And from there, to there, to there, to there, I've already walked. And I can't find any place to buy beer. Or not just beer, but supplies. You know, I gotta keep going here. There's nothing I can find. It's really frustrating. It's super hot. Uh, it's pretty much just totally miserable here. And to, to make things worse than I thought, I didn't know this till I got here. We got a junction, and this junction is going to be a problem. Up that direction, that's Fort Worth. I just realized I went into the library and looked on the internet a little bit. I don't want to go to Fort Worth. And if you see here, it looks like you got three tracks going that way. And I think just this one is the one to Clovis, which is where I want to go. And I mean, the yard is way back there. The train's gonna be moving when it hits the junction. And I mean, it's possible I'll just go to Fort Worth. I definitely am ready to get out of here. I mean, I can make do if it goes to Fort Worth, but it's gonna be a, a bigger pain than if I go to Clovis. So that's what's going on. Temple, Texas, July 1st. Cannot wait to get out of this place, out. All right, so here's the deal. You got northbound coal empties, guaranteed these are going the entire distance to Denver. What's the problem with these? First of all, basically, look at these coal cars. They're empty, so you're not gonna have to ride in the coal, but this is not a great ride. You're gonna be lying down somewhere in there. And yes, you can ride in that, but look at that. You're gonna be so dirty. And look at that wall. Are you positive you can get out of that? I'm not totally sure you can actually escape unless you're really tall. So if you don't do that, you can ride in the DPUs, which are down here, which is a good ride, generally. But your problem is that people come and check in those. See, those are right in the gas station. I don't know if they're getting refueled right now, but they're in the gas station. People come in those once a day at least. And they do this little check. And from here to Denver, that's gonna be, that could be three days. It's ridiculous how slow these things go. That means at least two times from now, guys are gonna come in there. What do you do then? I don't know. But the fact is this train, both of them, there's two of them there, side by side. These are going to Denver. I can be on that train somehow and get all the way to my destination. And that's what I'm trying to decide right now what to do. First thing that will veto this, I'm not gonna ride in the, the empty coal car. It just, it's not, it's dirty, you don't see any scenery, and honestly, I'm not sure you can get out. So that leaves the DPU. Recently, BN has been locking all the DPUs on these things. For whatever reason, this begs a more fundamental question about this. Is there time to go get more beer or not? Because I'm out of beer right now. And if I'm going to be on this thing for a day and a half to Denver, I'm going to need beer. This overpass, if you go left on this overpass, it's not super far to the gas station with beer. So I could wait around, definitely get the train, or I could go get some beer maybe miss the train. I'm just gonna take the advice 
that somebody in this situation thought, I'm gonna go get some beer. Not write that on the car. The thing's been written there, it's been on there for years already. And it's the perfect advice for a time like this. Lights the beer store. Here's the yard. Why? Why? Why is it not here at this freaking intersection? What the hell, man? We got a 12 pack of ice cold beer. Now it's time for the train to leave. I've never kissed a woman with as much passion as I'm sipping this beer right now. Oh, what a shot. Well, let's just say. A little later on, the right train has showed up. I'm in the rear engine of a coal. The change is going to Fort Worth. I just, I ran out of patience. The bugs, the mosquitoes, everything. We got a 12 pack. Passing through this crappy town, definitely not gonna miss Temple, Texas. There's just nothing interesting or exciting about this place. This train's making the left. This is a coal empty, but we're making the left to Clovis. Guaranteed. I'm really interested to see what the final result is gonna be with this train. The good news is there's a lot of beer left in that 12 pack. And this train is about to start booking it. So nothing really to complain about here. Oh my goodness, we got a major problem here. The train is dead ended. Look at this, we're dead ended here. Oh my goodness, we got a major problem here. The train is dead ended. Look at this, we're dead ended here. It's really clear that this is not near any town at all. Here's the engines from the train that pull them off. I've been walking around for a little while. There's no town here. There's nothing. This is not the crew change, that's for sure. Gravel cars. I'm not sure where this gravel is going. Maybe just to Home Depot. This is bad. Bad, bad, right now. I gotta find out where this is and if there's a town or a road. Cause this, this looks like being marooned. This is marooned here. Brownwood. Does anyone know where that is? I don't. Cause I'm a moron and I'm unprepared and I don't even have a map. We got trains just booking it through here. There's obviously no way to get on this thing. Well, this is looking like a possible extreme problem. I mean, it's not an extreme problem like, you know, getting run over by the train or arrested. But other than that, this, this is possibly going to deal break the rest of the trip if there's a bus station out of here. There's no train stopping at all. I got the one train that stops here in this yard. And it did end it here. And uh, I just don't know what to say. I don't want to wait around in these bushes for a long time long amount of time for something to maybe come and pick up some cars out of the yard. So I'm gonna hike into town and kind of see what the bus situation is. And if there's a bus, I may just, this may be it. This may be game over. Well, this is absolutely disastrous. There's one bus a day to Fort Worth and it leaves already, it's already left. So that's the emergency scenario. I think I'm just gonna go park by the tracks and hope something stops. And, you know, if, if it ain't here, if nothing stops or comes by by tomorrow, I'll probably have to push out and get that and then push out and get another one. And it's, this is just horrible.
know who came up with that saying, but they weren't talking about coming here. Marooned Brownwood, Texas. Basically the plan, I'm just gonna have to hang out at the siding. There's a siding, so there's a place where, you know, there's two tracks so a train can pass the other one. Pretty close, and I'm just gonna have to wait there until something stops. That may mean it's going the other direction, because the bus doesn't leave till tomorrow. Hitchhiking's impossible. There's just no direct roads. It's a miserable way to be spending today, I think. This is not what you want to be doing here with your life, folks. It's definitely not what I want to be doing with mine, but it's what I'm going to be doing. So I'll get this little kids railroad. That's one thing you can catch out on around here, I guess. Here at this little railroad museum here in Brown Hole or whatever it's called. Grim times, folks. This is possibly the worst instance of being marooned that I can ever recall in 10 plus years of traveling around on cargo trains. Basically, there's, you know, the tiny chance of a train stopping on the siding here. There's also a minor chance of one of these cuts of cars getting picked up by a westbound here at some point. The daily bus out of here does go to Fort Worth, which is basically that's deal killer time. I ride that bus, I'm just going to go there and have to ride another bus to get out of here. Game over for this trip. I'm absolutely out of energy and I don't even want to try to figure that out. So look at these cars parked in the yard. Look at that wheel. That thing ain't going anywhere and it hasn't been anywhere. Unreal. That is. I did that tag, folks. I don't know where or when, but KFC, Colonel's Freight Crew. That's a good sign. Maybe that's a sign of something positive. Very interesting signs here. I don't know if that's good or not, that my tag has got these ones on the same car. Look at this place. I got burrs everywhere in my leg here. It's just horrible. One thing we can be maybe positive about is we got this cut of cars. Right here, this is the siding. There's the main line. This cut of cars was shoved here early in the morning by the yard goat, the yard crew. And this is where you would put uh, a cut of cars that's going to be picked up by a westbound. All the wheels, there's no rust on those wheels. These are not here for storage. And that's goes for all the rail cars in this whole string. It's pretty likely that this string of cars is going to get picked up. The question is when. Tomorrow's Sunday. That's not a good... That's never good. But this is something I think will be picked up by a westbound eventually. Just have to say, I mean, this would be a great trip through this area if you had fast trains, no stupid mistakes like the one I did getting on that train where actually having looked at it it's pretty clear it's not a long distance train. I mean this could be great under those circumstances but under these circumstances this really sucks and I'm starting to question if I'm going to do this again after this trip how much more of this I can endure. The amount of time just going down the drain sitting around here it's starting to be very problematic the whole summer is starting to go to waste. This place is definitely super run down and dilapidated. Absolutely no activity whatsoever, like a bar, anything. I don't even know why people live in towns like this. Look at this, it's Saturday night. Nothing. Pretty much every place here is shuttered 100% in the downtown area. This town probably will not exist. Sporting goods. 
Yep, it's pretty much hollowing out. You see this kind of stuff. I'm just going to get a little philosophical here. What is the point of doing all this traveling? when this is like the main deal in a lot of these towns. There's nothing here. There's absolutely no reason to come to this place at all. And I kind of think that's depressing. I mean, this is a cool building. What used to happen up there? I have no idea. It looks like an apartment. You got this sporting goods store. You know, and so I don't know what it means. I don't know what this means as far as the future of the United States, but just town after town after town is just emptying out here. I mean, this is this place isn't even going to exist. If this is your Saturday summer night here, which is like one of the real popular topics with today's country songs, and you can't even find a bar here. I mean, this town's history. Absolutely zilch right here. Brown Hole, Texas. Just when things were looking so down, we got a westbound pulling in. He's on the siding. There's a red signal on the siding, meaning he's going to stop. Meaning that unless some BS happens in the next short amount of time, I'm out of here. It's about midnight and I was getting so dejected Come on, come on, pull up and stop. Please. See right down there, double reds. Oh, what do we got here? What's daddy bringing home? I just want to thank the train gods or whoever for saving me from this situation. This was really getting miserable and now it's over, hopefully. Safely on board out here. Thank you, train gods, thank you whoever for this train showing up. I like to stay humble, stay moving, appreciate it. Out. Adios, Brown Hole, Texas. Not a moment too soon out of this place. going on oh don't leave I'm nice what's going on still the hobo here at another apparent dead-end stop off the uh, not the crew change unfortunately this isn't as big a deal because I can at least tell that the train I'm on has not broken up it's still put together. I think they're just, I don't know why it's stopped here. But it's been quite a, quite a break and I'm starting to really ready, get ready to just not be here anymore. See the water tower, it's this Slatin, Slatin, Texas, which I think is somewhere near Lubbock, but it's not quite close enough. Once again, here we are just marooned I don't think it's as bad. I think the train, I mean, I don't know. You got crew vans here. You got these dokies. That's interesting. So, not nearly as bad a situation as it was. It's a lot further along than it was. I'm, I'm wondering if this crew van is gonna come put the, the uh, crew on the train. Cause I, my stuff's on the train. And I'm a pretty good distance from the track, so this would be a disaster if it did. Back on board! Leave in Slayton or Slatton, Texas. It's about time. It's been like a four hour stop in this yard. It's ridiculous. I hope. I hope we're out of here.
so the train is finally, finally leaving Texas and entering New Mexico at Clovis. And what's going on here is we got two possible options. I could just, <clears throat> I could get off and try to gamble on a train going to Amarillo, which means I'd have to go back through this junction and possibly go the wrong way. Or, right on, you know, and then from Amarillo I could get a, a train to Denver. And the other option is to stay on this to Bel Air, New Mexico, and get a bus. There's cheaper buses from there to Denver, and just do it that way. So here's the split. This is the busier line coming in from Amarillo. And, uh, yeah, now the lines converge at Clovis. I think I'm just gonna stay on this train to Bellin and end the trip there. I get a bus or I can hitchhike back to Denver. I just don't have enough time. Part of the problem is that junction where I was just talking about. I'm not positive which trains are going left. So to go to Amarillo, it would be a bit of a gamble and I just don't have time for that right now. I think we're leaving Clovis. Heading west, out. Folks, uh, successfully just debarked the train in Berlin or Berlin, however you say it. That's gonna probably conclude this episode. I'm gonna get a bus from here up to Denver, and honestly, buses aren't really remarkable enough to include in a YouTube video. But I will say, if you want to see a lot of trains, this is a good place. Non-stop trains coming through here. There could be a hundred a day. You know, we got this four double stack trains refueling down there and then just going west. Being here on the BNSF Transcon definitely makes me wanna go further west on this. Let's save that for the next episode. Right now I'm fried. So in conclusion, uh, for this Stove the Hobo episode, we traveled from New Orleans to Bellin on Union Pacific and then Burlington Northern Santa Fe, passing through Houston, Temple, 
Brownwood, Texas, and then uh, finally Clovis and off to here. This has been a major grind and I'm, I'm glad it's over. It's nice that the final trip from uh, Clovis out here was so uneventful. And if I could do it again, I know what not to do. Just stay on intermodal trains is the conclusion. Don't get on anything, just general manifest freight because it's gonna stop or it's gonna dead end or something. So, uh, so long, till next time. Stowed the hobo out. Thank you.